What does it look like in Palestine, in Palestine, in Judea, before Jesus, peace be upon him, comes? Since Julius Caesar, the Romans practiced what's called syncretism, where you had client kingdoms, semi-independent kingdoms, so a people that ruled, but they really were ruled, okay? Similar to our Muslim countries today, they're client kingdoms, you know, they don't actually have autonomy, right? <laughs> Back then, you had Herod, who's known as the king of the Jews, who operates under the Roman Empire, but it's a semi-independent kingdom. It still has to pay taxes. They still have to answer to a higher Roman authority. And that's something that causes a lot of hatred, a lot of resentment amongst the children of Israel, amongst Bani Israel, that we are still ruled from an outside power, that the temple has been destroyed, that we don't have autonomy. And this Herod, who rules, from 37 before Christ up until 4 BCE before Christ. He's a successful king, but he's brutal. He targets political opponents. He murders anyone that he even senses threatens his rule. And he's really taking away the, the Jewish character, if you will, the Abrahamic character, away from Jerusalem, away from Palestine, away from these ideas of Tawhid and monotheism. He's removing all of that character. And instead, he's really focused on turning Palestine into a tourist destination. So he's the one to introduce sculptures and statues in that area, even though these were people that believed in the oneness of God. And everything in that context becomes about, to Bani Israel, who is the Messiah that's going to come and liberate us from this humiliation, from this rule. So the focus becomes on a Messiah that will liberate us from this domination that comes from outside. And the weight is for particularly Al-Masih ibn Dawood, not bin Dawood and Hajj and Umrah, the Messiah, the son of David, meaning a Messiah that is a child, a descendant of King David alayhi salam. And there are many Messiahs in the Bible, and Messiahs are not necessarily prophets. There are Messiahs that are kings, prophets, rabbis. In fact, there's a huge debate in Judaism about whether Dawood alayhi salam is a prophet or just a king. A Messiah means someone who's anointed, and when it's stripped of its religious implications, what the focus of that Messiah becomes is establishing the kingdom of God, establishing the rule of God on earth, particularly establishing the temple, the temple of Sulaiman alayhi salam, reestablishing Jerusalem, upholding the Torah, ruling by that. And the specifications of this Messiah really speak to that. He's a leader. He's well-oriented with the laws that are followed in Judaism. And Orthodox Jews hold the Messiah, the belief in a Messiah, as one of the 13 principles of faith. So it's a big deal to believe in this Messiah, this messianic figure that comes back and that reestablishes the law and restores the dignity of the law and particularly restores the temple. He's a great military leader. He's someone that brings everyone to the worship of the God of Abraham and he restores the temple. Now the emphasis in that time becomes on just the restoration of the temple. Who's going to come and restore the temple? In that context, there were many messiahs, or many people that were looked at as being the potential messiah, the potential messiah. So the messiah was never meant to be a child of God, or someone that brings about this new concept of salvation, or that dies for the sins of man. The Messiah was looked at as a powerful, authoritative figure that really brings the political rule back to Bani Israel. And because theology now was missing from them, deen was missing from them, spirituality was missing from them, corruption was rampant, the focus was all on that political power once again and that political autonomy. So for example, biblically speaking, the Persian King Cyrus, who is called a Messiah, he's called a Messiah because he, de he defeated the Babylonians and he restored the temple way before Isa alayhi salam. And if you read in Psalm 137 verse 8, O Babylon, you will be destroyed. Happy is the one who pays you back for what you have done to us. Move on to 137 verse 9. Blessed is the one who grabs your babies and smashes them against a rock. That's the passion of the restoration of the temple and a Messiah that comes back and gives us back our power. And because the Persian king Cyrus, who's not even from Bani Israel, defeats Babylon and restores the temple. He's given that title of a Messiah. Judas Maccabeus, 160 years before Christ, leads a successful revolt against the Seleucid Empire of the time. 
purifies the Temple of Jerusalem, and that's where Hanukkah commemorates. Because again, the idea is the restoration of the Temple, the restoration of autonomy, the ability to practice and to rule. It really gives a lot of context to a lot of what happens now as far as the arguments and the claims that are made to Al-Quds, that are made to Jerusalem. In the time of Isa alayhi salam, so there's a, a documentary by National Geographic called The First Jesus. Watch it. It's really, really interesting. It's fascinating. It's called The First Jesus. It's about a man by the name of Simon of Peria. He was only four years before the birth of Christ. He was one of the slaves of Herod. And he's a strong man. He's very cunning. He burnt down Herod's palace in Jericho. He burnt down a lot of his other palaces. So he staged this huge revolt against Herod. And a lot of people thought he was him. People thought that must be the Messiah because he was succeeding in doing a lot of things to Herod that had not been done by others. But he was caught and beheaded and that was the end of him. So there's this idea of any time a figure rises, it's just like now, by the way, every day on Twitter, someone else claims to be the Messiah and the Mahdi and they tweet at us and say, I just want to let you know I'm the Messiah. I didn't know Jesus would sign up on Twitter. Uh, and that would be his first actions. But I'm the Mahdi, I'm the Messiah, I'm at Dhul Qarnayn uh, recently as well. So people rise up. But in that situation, it's like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be, right? So there is a desperate wait that's on for a Masih, really for political reasons at that time. 